hello there guys and welcome to daily updates there is this video that has been trending on social media of uh, the mec of health in limpopo popi ramatuba she's speaking to a zimbabwean in Bilavela who's been admitted at the hospital in Bilavela, and she's speaking about uh, various uh, topics uh, ranging from uh, how there are many zimbabwean illegal zimbabweans who have been treated in south africa to the fact that zanu pf doesn't really care about uh, this problem so i just want to play it for you guys but rest assured the patient is not being shown on the video it's just the minister uh, the mec who's speaking about these uh, topics but speaking directly to this patient please have a listen you know he doesn't give me my you speak Shona. And then how do you find yourself in Bila Bila and <laughs> when you are supposed to be with Mundanga government? You know he doesn't give me money to operate you guys. And I'm operating with my limited budget. Oh, well, you can't appreciate that. <laughs> you are killing my health system. You are killing my health system. When you guys are sick, I'm hearing these days, you just say, let's cross the Mbopo River. There's an MEC there who's running the charity department. It's not. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that is truthful and painful. You know that SA goes and count people during the census and tell me that in Limpopo you have got 5.7 million people and tell me out of that 5.7 million, 91% do not have medical aid, they are dependent on the state. Uh, Nine percent, they would say, has got medical aid, they depend on private hospital. And then they go and give national treasure. When national treasure allocates its budget, they said Limpopo has got 5.7 million people, and they subtract the nine percent, and they give me the budget of the 91 to do all this operation. Now, I am here instead of using the budget for what it's meant for, I'm operating for what Munangwagwa is supposed to do. And that is why when my people of Limpopo want health services, they can't get. And that is angering the community. Because you are coming here to act hours in George Masaev. We are busy operating with Mozambique and National everywhere. And you are not even registered anywhere. You are not counted. You are even illegal. And you are abusing me. This is unfair. It's unfair. It's unfair. That's, those are the words she says. Um, speaking about uh, illegal immigrants, the hospital... Nagangwa, the, the, the ZANU PF, as if they would even care, as if they even care about the number of people that are being treated in South Africa. I can go to Zimbabwe and get health care. Do you think they can allow to open? Nah. It's for their own people. I went to Canada recently. You know, before I entered the country, I must, before they give me a visa, I must show them that a proof that indeed if I fell sick in Canada, I'll be able to cater for myself. It is only in South Africa where people just come in. And people have got problems with Minister Mtualik. You know why he's like this? It's because he was working in health and he knows the pain. Mm -hmm. And people call him xenophobic to say he's anti zimbabwe He's not anti anybody. Minister Mtualik was feeling the pain. I used to go with him to uh, Musim to see the problem there. So, says you won't be discharged until you circle your bill. What? Wait. It says, you won't be discharged until you circle your bill. Oh my God. This is um, a public hospital. You won't be discharged until you settle your bill. Okay. The issue here, uh, the MEC is speaking to a patient, but the issue is bigger than that. When Zimbabweans move from Zimbabwe into South Africa, uh, let's specifically speak about the one in Musina where they are, they are seeking for 
um, health care. They come, apparently some of them come from when they are pregnant, they, they cross the border, come into South Africa, get treated, and then they have to go back. It highlights the problem, the healthcare system problem in Zimbabwe. Now, here the issue is, how does a dictator die on the throne and then you still take one of the people who worked with that dictator to lead the country? For so many years, for so many years, Zimbabwean people have been struggling with poverty, with everything. The country has collapsed. Sanctions have been imposed long ago. For so many years, Zimbabwean people, they vote for the same person, for the same party. It's like they have hope in this party. Maybe there is fear. If you don't vote for us, you'll be in trouble. If you don't vote for us, we'll deal with you. Because we remember when the, uh, Morgan Changare was uh, an opposition, there was a time when he won the elections. And then Zan PF couldn't allow it. They couldn't allow the men to take the throne and lead. So they continued to be the leading party, the Zanu PF, because they couldn't allow Morgan Shangarai to lead. Because they knew if he, they allowed him, there was going to be change in that country. So politicians, they have all this money. They leave the country collapsing and they are going to be blaming sanctions. They are going to be blaming a lot of things. In the middle of that, South Africa is struggling because there is a lot of burden on its shoulders. I spoke about the fact that this thing of healthcare has been going for so many years. As the MEC is correctly saying that the reason Aaron Mutsualeri is speaking about these issues is because he knows and he's been going to the border in Musina to see this situation. And I can tell you, it's not only in Musina. It's not only in Limpopo. It is there in Pumalanga. It is there in Gauteng. It is there in other many parts of South Africa. Because the government of Zimbabwe just doesn't care. And when the government doesn't care, the people must find means to survive. Well, those means are South Africa. They come into South Africa. And she's correctly right by saying that there's too much burden on uh, the, the, the economy, on, on the healthcare system. Like the Treasury offers this budget. Instead of you operating on this budget, you now have to add 50% of bodies to operate with that percent, with that money they gave you. South Africa must hold the Zimbabwean government accountable, the Mozambican the Mozambican government accountable. There is no way that a country can have little money for so many people and still operate. It's such a shame when you hear of things like, um, I went to hospital, <clears throat> sorry, they told me that I can't be operated because the hospital is full. And then statistics says, uh, this percentage in hospitals is illegal immigrants. Of course, they need, they need help. But then we have to start a topic. We start to start a conversation. The government start a conversation, a hard conversation with the Zimbabwean, the ZANU-PF. That illegitimate government called the ZANU-PF. They need to start a conversation with them on what the hell are you doing? What is, what is the job of Nagangwa? Since he came into power, nothing changed. I mean, you can take an old person who was there by Mugabe, who, who has witnessed all these bad things that had, had happened to the Zimbabwean people, put him there and say, this guy will be your leader. I mean, you are bringing a, a dictator 2.0 into government. What do you think is going to happen to the people of Zimbabwe? I'm sure themselves also, as much as they would enjoy the better healthcare system, I'm sure they are not proud of the fact that they have to be spoken like this. Because at the end of the day, 
the person who's speaking this, he spe- she's speaking for the many South Africans who are complaining about the fact that they are not receiving help. help. What is the government of South Africa doing? She says that you are going to have to settle your bill. A, ma- a year ago, I heard of a story about the fact that uh, Zimbabwe, Mozambique need, need to be built for all the patients who have been treated in South Africa. If they were to build Zimbabwe now for all the patients who have been treated, it's going to be billions. It's going to be billions of money. So they can't. Not even they can. They won't pay that bill. Now the question is, with this continued treating of illegal immigrants who actually need help also, and treating of South Africans, what is to happen to the healthcare system of South Africa? They were speaking of NHI. What is to happen to the healthcare of South Africa? Because at the end of the day, it's just going to collapse. Nothing will ever work. Maybe our president needs to take a visit to Zimbabwe and just tell the guy that if you don't do anything about it, we'll deal with you with you ourselves. Because just because you, you have been a, a dictator or uh, next to a dictator it doesn't mean that you can do anything. Let me play the video for the last time. John, and then how do you find yourself in Vila Vila <laughs> when you are supposed to be with Mundanga government? You know he doesn't give me money to operate you guys. And I'm operating with my limited budget. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you can't appreciate that. You're killing, you're killing my health system. You are killing my health system. When you guys are sick, I'm hearing these days, you just say, let's cross the Mbopo River. There's an MEC there who's running charity department. It's not. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that is truthful and painful. You know, that SA goes and count people during the census and tell me that in Limpopo you have got 5.7 million people and tell me out of that 5.7 million 91% do not have medical aid they are dependent on the state Uh, 9% they will say has got medical aid they depend on private hospital and then they go and give national treasure when National Treasury allocates its budget, they said Limpopo has got 5.7, uh, uh, 5.7 million people and they subtract the, 91, the 7%, 9%, and they give me the budget of the 91 to do all this operation. Now, I am here, instead of using the budget for what it's meant for, I'm operating for what Munangwabwa is supposed to do. And that is why when my people of Limpopo want health services, they can't get. And that is angering the community. Because you are coming here to act hours in George Masael. We are busy operating with Mozambique and National everywhere. And you are not even registered anywhere. You are not counted. Mm-hmm. You are even illegal. And you are abusing me. This is unfair. It's unfair. I can't go to Zimbabwe and get health care. Do you think they can allow to operate me? It's for their own people. I went to Canada and said, you know, before I enter the country, I must, before they give me a visa, I must show them that a proof that indeed if I fell sick in Canada, I'll be able to cater for myself. It is only in South Africa where people just come in. And people have got problems with me actually. You know why he's like this? It's because he was working in health and he knows the pain. Mm. And people call him xenophobic to say he's anti Zimbabwe. He's not anti anybody. Maybe Sam Tolling was feeling the pain. I used to go with him to um, Musim to see the problem there. So, says, you won't be discharged until you settle your bill. You must charge him. I can tell you now, uh, this video, she knew she was being recorded. Um, 
Actually, they organized this just to spread a message. And the bigger question is, um, are they going to hold Mnagangwa accountable? I think the simple thing to do is not to expect Mnagangwa to answer them from Zimbabwe. That man must come into South Africa. Ooh, he's, 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 to us, he's not a, a president. He has as much power as a MEC. So he must come to South Africa to answer these questions. And the people of Zimbabwe, I know it's probably a hard thing to do, but how about just voting this ZANU-PF out? I mean, how many years are the people of Zimbabwe going to suffer under one man, under one party? And the ones who are in South Africa, this thing of not going to vote when the elections start, this is the biggest problem. Because them are the ones who speaks the most against Zanu PF. But come elections time, they do not go home and vote. They only went when uh, Morgan Changarai won. Most of them went that time and they had much influence. But how about you change? You can't be ruled by old people. We are going to be dealing with Ramaphosa come 2024. So you have to deal with Mnagangwa also. If not, 2030, the same problem. I mean, who are you going to be in 2030? What, are, what is Zimbabwe going to be? That, is, that used to be one of the most powerful countries in, in Africa when South Africa was experiencing apartheid. Now it is the opposite because of these dictators who think Zimbabwe is that it is their sorry Zimbabwe is their ch child which they can decide for they do not own Zimbabwe but because you keep voting for them they feel like they own Zimbabwe they feel like they own you it's upon you to make change Zimbabweans it's upon you to make sure you end the suffering of your children, the suffering of your future children. If you don't, he keeps making himself rich. Your country keeps collapsing. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning into the channel and watching my videos. And until next time, cheers.